Good morning to all of you. Welcome to the pre lecture series on electrical engineering. Here, the lecture number 4.2, where we are going to discuss the generation of the AC signal and B wave in any kind of the machines. So, here, let us suppose a field is there, which is like this fashion, and this is called the armature, which is like this fashion. And these are the slots where we have to fill the windings. And uh, after filling this, we can generate the AC. So these are basically the windings. And <coughs> there is a commutator segment that we are calling like this fashion. It is a commutator, or we can say that it is a the slip rings. It depends upon the DC or AC. But let us assume these are the commutator. And these are basically brushes, and the output is coming like this fashion. So, whenever this armature is rotated in a constant magnetic field, this is the constant magnetic field, this is the armature which is being rotated in the constant magnetic field, then this field, basically, this field which is going to be like this fashion cuts the rotating conductors in the armature winding and as a result an EMF is induced in the conductor and with the help of slip rings or with the help of brushes we can collect the current at the outer end so that we have to discuss so in this lecture we will discuss about how we can generate the AC signal when it, any coil is rotated in a constant magnetic field like this fashion so if we are just drawing this rotor like this fashion, we can say that this is like this fashion, it's having a shaft, it's having a stator core, having a slot start there, that means for the thin laminations in order to reduce the eddy current, there is thin lamination core with riveting at these points in order to make a complete core and let us suppose a wire is going to be filled in this core like this fashion, it is going to be at this slot moving inside the slot and back to the from outer ends. So this is the, the filling of the armature windings in the slot. Similarly the next wire came like this fashion. This is the next wire. It is came, it, uh, it is basically it, it, it is going in this slot and then come back to from the different position. So, like this fashion, we can put the armature winding in the stator in the rotor core, and we have seen that the basically, if any wire is having a rectangular in shape, which having a conductor A and A dash, similarly B and B dash, C and C dash consecutively. So, we have understand that the armature winding is basically having a rectangular core, and by putting the winding in this slot, we can make the armature windings. And it is placed in the constant magnetic field. Next, move on to our next slide. Here we can say that this is the constant magnetic field, like this fashion. The, the, the flux is moving from north to south, and a rectangular coil which having a two conductors A and A dash is placed in a constant magnetic field. And this winding is being connected to the, this point. Similarly, uh, uh, similarly, uh, this winding is connected to the, this point. And these are the basically, we can say that the slip rings. This is basically the slip ring where it is used to collect the current. Slip rings. Similarly, we can say that this is also called slip rings. Here, in this case, this is the armature which has been placed in a constant magnetic field, and by some external means, we are rotating this armature. Then what will happen to the, this armature coil, we can say that this coil will experience, the coil having a conductor A will experience a change in flux. As a result, there is an induced EMF in this coil A. Similarly, when the flux is passing through this coil and moves enters in the core section of this rotor, then it is passing through the A dash conductor which is also cut at this point. So we can say that in a complete rotation, this flux cuts the coil at two conductors that is at this point and at this point. So there is a change in flux is going to take place and the, and, uh, at this point and it, at this point. So 
we can say that there is a induced EMI with of d equals to a minus n d phi upon dt at this point a and a dash and this and direction of the induced EMI can be determined by using a Fleming right hand rule. This is the Fleming right hand rule. You can say that like this fashion. This direction, uh, I think we have to move in a different position. Fleming right hand rule like this fashion. So this is the direction of Fleming right hand rule. This is the forefinger, this middle finger. This is basically thumb. This will be shown as a force which is given on the conductor. This is basically the magnetic field, the flux which is going to be like this fashion. The Fleming right hand rule. So this is basically the direction of current. This is the direction of current. So by using this by using this law and this coil, we can say that the, the flux is moving like, like this fashion and the force is in the upper uh, direction and the current is going to take place at entry. So the coil A will experience a force which is having a current entering in, in nature. Similarly, the coil A dash which is having a, a, the experience a force in the downward direction and the flux is constant. So we can say that this having a like this polarity. So, with the help of the Fleming right hand rule, we can easily calculate the direction of the induced current or the induced EMF in the armature of, of in the armature of winding, and it is located in a constant magnetic field. Now, if the direction will be common, come, then we can draw the direction of the, the current. Let us suppose the A is having a cross, so it is entering the current like this fashion. The current is entering. Similarly, at A dash, the current is leaving like this fashion after leaving this it can be blown through this point again this point this point and when it comes to this point then it is moved for, 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 when it is moved for, for towards the load because this is uh, the main objective is to collect the, uh, the, the current and this brushing is basically touch the slip rings so whenever the coil is rotated this brushes solutions are fixed but the slip rings are touching this brushes as a result, the current comes and it is going to the, the brushes and going towards the load. Similarly, if, uh, uh, similarly, if you have considered this case, the current is leaving like this fashion, current is leaving and move towards it. Then with the help of the brushes, it is going to be like in this fashion and like this. So we can say that whenever the magnet, uh, the stationary, uh, whenever the rotating conductors is placed in a constant magnetic field then there is an induced EMF which generates the induced current and direction of induced current can be easily calculated or determined with the help of the Fleming right hand rule. Now after half cycle, what we say after half cycle, that is after half cycle, after half cycle we may conclude that the position of the brushes is fixed. There is no change in the position of pressure. So, so this is fixed. This position and, and this position is fixed, but the change is only the direction of the coil. Here, this is the point that is suppose this is the point x is there. Now the x is going to be like this fashion. Similarly, if, if this is point y line, then the y position. So after half cycle, we can say that A will interchange with the sorry, I think this is this is uh, A. Just remove it. This is basically A dash and this is A. So, this is A. So, after half cycle, A will take a position like this A, da a and A dash will take a position of A dash. Uh, a, a. Similarly, if we are applying the Fleming right hand rule in A and A dash, then we can solve that, conclude that it also having a dot and it, and it is also having a cross. That means in a one complete cycle of rotation, the conductors A or conductor A dash having a opposite polarity. In, in one cycle, A is having a cross and A dash is having a dot and after half cycle, A is having a dot and A dash is having a, a cross. That means whenever a constant magnetic field, 
attack means whenever the constant magnetic field a coil is placed and it is rotated at any speed then this conductors which is placed in the coil experience ac condition that means there is ac voltage is induced in this coil which i mean the cross and the dot polarity is there okay so this is the basic concept so we can say that the current is entering mean the current is entering like this fashion like this fashion like this fashion and in, and in the a the current is leaving so like this fashion like this like this like this is it entering towards this and go oh, sorry it is move towards this position so this is plus here is plus minus so it, it is plus minus the current is going to be like this fashion like this like this like this and going towards the a dash conductor so at the low side we can say that during the first time cycle this is plus and this is minus and during the second half cycle it is plus it is minus that means there is alternative current is available at the low and we can say that in the con uh, inside the conductors the conductor a or conductor data will experience a ac condition that means uh, in the first time cycle the current is entering and in the second half cycle the current is leaving Similarly, in the ADS conductor, in the first half cycle, the current is leaving, and the second half cycle, the current is entering. So, AC is generated inside the coil, and we can and, and at the outer ends we can also obtain the AC. So, we can say that whenever the constant magnetic field, uh, in a constant magnetic field, if a coil is located at any speed, then this coil having conductor A or ADS will generate a a force which generates a current, uh, the EMI which is alternating in nature. So this is the basic concept of the generation of AC. Next, move on to our next concept that is called the uh, uh, mathematical understanding. We know that the formula of induced EMI is E equals to B and B sin theta, where we can say that the theta is basically the angle between theta is basically the angle between magnetic field and the velocity vector. Here we can say that the magnetic field is going to be like this fashion. This is called the magnetic field and at point 1, at the location of the point 1, that means the location of the point 1 means we are, uh, we are, and, and, uh, that, uh, this is point 1, this is point 2, this is point 3 and this is basically the point 4. If we are just observing this 1, 2, 3, 4 and Showing in this fashion like this, the conductor A is having a velocity vector like this fashion. Similarly, when the conductor X is at this point, then it is having a velocity like me at, at this position. Similarly, at the conductor is the X at point 3, they are having a velocity vector D, and X point 4 it is a velocity vector V. So we can say that the at point 1, the theta is basically 90. So it, it uh, that means E equals to E max. Maximum induced EMF is there at point one. Similarly, if the conductor at point two, then there is a zero angle between the velocity vector and the magnetic field. So we can say that theta becomes a zero. So E becomes zero at the point two. Similarly, at point three, the conductor having the velocity of 90 degree, but E equals to basically minus E max because we know that in the left hand side of the conductor having the cross and the right side conductor having the dot that means the D that means the D, uh, direction of the magnetic field which is generated in the other half cycle is going to be a uh, change so it is minus similarly at point 4 it, uh, it is angle 0 so E becomes 0 so we can say that the at the location 1 and the location 3 there is a maximum into CMF generated in the coil but having opposite to uh, polarity because of the FRR we have already uh, calculated but at the location number 2 and 4 there is a 0 induced EMF it is called E equals to 0 and E equals to 0 at point 2 and point 4 but at 1 and 3 there is a induced EMF which is maximum and it is minus maximum why it is um, uh, minus uh, because at point 1 the, the, the induced EMF is having a polarity of cross and having a dot so we can say that like this fashion, this is conductor A and conductor A dash, this is conductor A and this is conductor A dash, it's having a E equals to B L B which is maximum and E max is equals to minus B L B. So this is the basic concept of the 
generation of the induced EMF in the coils which is rotating in a constant magnetic field. Now, let's move on to our next concept that is called as a B wave or induced wave. So we can say that we have already understood the concept that at this locations at point one the maximum induced EMF at point two induced EMF is zero at point three it is maximum over negative. And at point four, the induced EMF is zero. So, at, if we are considering the point A, that means the induced EMF at conductor A, then we can say that it is maximum at point one. It is zero. Basically, at point two, similarly, it is maximum but negative in nature at point three. It is zero at point four, and so on. This is repetitive in nature. Similarly, if we are considering the voltage induced in a conductor E A dash, we can say that it is. Uh, it is negative or maximum at point three. It is zero at point four. It is positive maximum at point one, and it is again zero at point two. Similarly, at this position. So this is the basic formula of derivation. Uh, sorry, but uh, this is the basic waveform of the induced EMF where when the conductors are rotating in a constant magnetic field. So I think you should understood the basic concepts of how the EMF is induced and what are the dot process will be generated. Our, our, our objective is that the conductors having a left hand side is always be crossed. Whenever the conductor crosses the zero axis, then its polarity should be re reversed. That means in a constant magnetic field, the EMF induced is always alternating in nature, and this is the basic operation that you already understand. So. I think you will enjoy this session. In the next session, we will discuss about the concept of electrical angle and concept of mechanical angle. So, thank you.